It was Friday, 10th February 1984, 5 a.m. before daybreak. The soldiers arrived at Wagala village in Wajia town. There was no time to knock at the doors. They started breaking into each house in the village, searching for every male human species. The soldiers who were in army, army trucks started beating men and throwing them in the trucks, ready for transportation. Whenever they found a man, the only question they would ask was what is your clan? A mention of the Godia clan was a direct ticket for beatings and being bundled in the truck. The operation to round up all the Godia men was carried out from the morning all the way to around 1 p.m. Every lorry that was full transported the men to the Wagala East. By afternoon, the East was full with over 5,000 men at the East. More beatings awaited them. In the afternoon, police officers from Garisha started addressing the men at the East and told them that they were all suspected to having guns and they were expected to cooperate and surrender their guns. When the military officers arrived at the airstrip, normalcy and peace were suspended. They started beating up the men and continued doing so for over two hours. By 2 p.m., when the sun was scorching the ground, the army, through the commanding officer Major Mudogo, commanded the men to strip naked and lie down on their stomachs at the hot maram. When the burning sun became unbearable, one boy who was a camel had tried to run. The boy who was later known to be Ishmael became the first casualty. He was shot and one of the soldiers laughed saying that the hyenas have had their first meal of the many to come. Back in the village, after all the men were rounded up and taken to the Wagala airstrip, the soldiers left behind started threatening women. What followed later was a massive heinous act meted on those women by the soldiers. Many were raped, from young girls as 8 years to pregnant women. As some of the soldiers were busy raping innocent Godia women. Others started burning the houses. Between 2 p.m. and 3 p.m., over 100 houses were up in flames. It was reported that more than 15 children were burned alive in the houses. Back to the raping soldiers. By the time evening was clocking, they had raped more than 500 women. Some of those who were willing to talk include the likes of Abdiya Abey, Sekawa, Semwai, and Abdiya or Morgan, among hundreds of others. Any woman who resisted rape was either stabbed or shot to death. Others, their legs were broken so that they could not move or resist and they were gang raped by the soldiers. One woman by the name Zainab Hussein, who was 8 months pregnant, was gang raped until she was cut. Others like Abdiya or Moge, who we named Alia, would be left with lifetime scars. Abdiya was a business lady at Wagala. When the operation was being carried out, when the soldiers got to her, they took all the money she had and one of the soldiers was left behind to rape her. Out of the pain she felt, she tried to bite the soldiers who was raping her. The soldier hit her so hard with the gun that all her front teeth were knocked out. Out of the pain she felt when her teeth were knocked out, she, she tightly grabbed the soldier. In retaliation, the soldier used his gun and hit her for the second time, but this time aiming at the eye. The land on the eye was so big that one of the eye literally fell off instantly. 